The bayous of Louisiana are some of the most biodiverse areas in North America, hosting an incredible array of plant and animal life. Last summer, I had the opportunity to explore southern Louisiana with native wildlife expert Zachary Gray, who helped me find one of the most secretive and uniquely adapted animals that can be found in this area. However, finding this species proved about a thousand percent easier than actually catching one to present for the camera. No, wait, there he is. Is that him? Yep. Yeah. All that I will say is, it took many, many, many tries before I finally got one in the net. It's unbelievable how hard they are to catch. I don't know how Zach does this. Man. It's holy. What do you mean, I don't, I don't see Wrigledge. But if he was in there, he'd have a little concussion. <laughs> nope. Okay. Huh. Let's count this one as a loss, I think. Huh. Okay. Let's go to another one. It's a learning curve, you see, but we're improving. Uh, Touch this one with the stick. Next one, guaranteed catch. Okay. Okay. Collection. It's I moving. Really think I got it this time. I really do. I swear I have it. I just saw it go in the net. You got it. You got yes. it. Yes! Finally! Wow! I didn't think it would be this much of a struggle. Okay. All right, sweet guys. <laughs> that took longer than I thought. I am awful at catching these apparently, but man, we got one in the net. Oh wow, they are so, they are really slick. That's incredible, okay. Check it out guys. This is the three-toed, that is the three-toed, all right, nope, not in the hands. All right guys, check it out. Now that is one of the coolest, you know what? We'll leave him out for a second, I guess. He can stay out of the water for a while. This, guys, is the three-toed Ampuma, the longest salamander species in North America. Now, of course, hellbenders technically are the largest by mass, but by length, the Ampuma is undisputedly the longest salamander in North America. And these are found primarily in very swampy habitats. They like areas of slow-moving or not-moving water. Uh, and they are nocturnal predators. So you can see he has this very long, very slippery body. He is built almost exactly like a snake or an eel in form. However, it is definitely still a salamander. Now, he, I mean, you can't feel him, but he just glides through my hands like greased lightning. This mucus layer that they have on their skin not only helps defend against predators because they're really, really hard to grab, but it also helps protect their immune system and helps them with gas exchange. Now, we'll see if I can keep working him like this. He ended up calm down just a tad. Okay. So what you'll notice actually is on the front of the body and near the vent, there are these two pairs of what looks like vestigial legs. However, Zach has told me that these are actually really important sensory organs for these animals. So these contain many, many nerve endings and because these animals are basically blind and basically deaf, they are hunting and feeling their world completely through smell and through vibration. Uh, so they actually do serve a very important purpose for this animal. Now these are very, very secretive animals and actually very little is known about their behavior in the wild. Not very much research can be done on them because they are found in such few locations and completely nocturnal and they do not come out during the day at all, except for maybe during the breeding season, but that's pretty unlikely in of itself. Now at night, what they're doing is, is hunting. So they are predators of pretty much anything they can get a hold of, although they really do love crayfish. So out here in these canals, that would be their prey of choice. That's probably what they're going after primarily. However, they'll certainly also feed on salamanders, minnows, uh, tadpoles, anything else they can grab with that mouth. Now, if he were to open the mouth, you would see that they actually do have pretty nice little teeth in there. They have a double row of serrated teeth, almost like a snake, which is used for gripping their very slimy prey. 
Now, one of the other really interesting things that we are still looking into as far as research goes is the breeding habits of amphiumas. Uh, what we do know is that the female lays a clutch of anywhere between 20 and 200 eggs in leaf litter, and that can happen throughout the year, but especially in the springtime is when they generally will lay. Uh, and females, at least in some research papers, have been cited as guarding their nests, staying there while the eggs are incubating, which could take anywhere from about five to six months. Uh, and then when the eggs hatch, those babies will mature in about three to four years, depending on the location and the temperature of the water. Now, lots more research needs to be done about amphiumas, but unfortunately, time is running out for a species like this. Uh, as a salamander species that is fully aquatic, they are very, very sensitive to any kind of water quality issues. So anything that gets put in the water, these guys, populations of amphiumas, will definitely feel it first. So that can be an early warning sign of a, of a bad ecosystem. You get things, problems like acidification and siltation can be massive problems for populations of these animals. And the problem is we really don't have any baseline population data. So we have no idea how many there are and how fastly they're declining. All we know is that anecdotally, populations of amphiumas are definitely getting smaller and smaller and there's fewer and fewer places to find them. So this is one animal, guys, that it really is important that people see it and that people understand that they are still an important part of the ecosystem. Uh, very, actually, there, there are no other salamanders here that fulfilled the same ecological role. No other amphibians here are getting this large. None of them are nocturnal, and none of them are able to prey on the things that these do or provide food. Uh, and that's the other key thing with amphiumas is they are the favored food of, th of aquatic snakes, such as mud snakes. So if we have poor water quality and we have urban expansion, which wipes out amphiumas populations, you're not just affecting them, you're making their prey items go out of whack, and you're also potentially putting things like mud snakes at risk, which are really cool animals that we don't want to lose either. All right, guys, this has been a really cool animal encounter for today's episode. Really glad we could get this animal in front of a camera and hopefully raise some more awareness about these problems that they're having out in the wild. I'm gonna go put it back in the water right now, but in the description, I'm, I'm gonna leave a little bit more information about some of these conservation challenges and hopefully the links to learn more about these and take action about their conservation challenges if you would like to. Let's get it back in the water. You good? Yep. See you, buddy. Thank you. Well, everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the three-toed amphiuma. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every other Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno, of The Wild Report, signing out.